everybody, it's Michelle here with Angel Souls. This is the little quick wellness check-in. If you don't know what this is about, I'm trying to go on a wellness journey and I have been so far weekly, I may not do this every week, but just checking in with everybody who's doing this with me. How are you doing? How was the week? And I can be very honest with you. I was having a lot of cravings this week for salt and sugar. Absolutely, I was. Just celebrated another birthday last night. So there were drinks, cupcakes. What was the day before? Oh, went to a happy hour. So this was not the best week for like, I would say good nutrition necessarily. It wasn't terrible the entire time, but definitely, um, I think some of the emotional eating was, was being triggered. And part of that is just, I personally feel shifts and changes going on within me. I don't really know the way forward I'm having. I'm trying to have faith, but you know, things pop up and they're stressful. And, uh, you know, I think, I think I was contending with that this week. I, I'm a little concerned. I think I may have injured my arm, uh, in working out. So please be careful out there. Don't overdo it. Um, I'm to the point where like if I were on the floor and I was about to push myself up off the ground, my arm would kind of give out. Uh, so I'm nursing that right now. But my intention, I can actually do a uh, ballet bar today as a workout. So right now I'm filming, I'm going to be editing, I got some readings to do, set my schedule up for the week. I got to work on some taxes too. Don't get me started. Don't get me started. And then I'll, you know, get to that workout. So just laying it out there for you. I didn't have a perfect week. I didn't have something where I'm like, yeah, I really nailed it this week, but I'm not going to call it a failure either. It was actually a very good, uh, time to observe, you know, what, what is making me want to eat this type of food? What is making me want ice cream, right? And what's making me, and I, it was impulsive too. It was impulsive. So that is something I'm going to be giving a lot of time and attention to. I think, you know, the, that as a, as a clue keeps coming up for me. And as I've already disclosed to people, I'm, I'm not, I don't hide that I deal with eating issues, eating disorders. Okay. And I say disorders because, um, I've tried to get help for this and unfortunately I have not yet been successful in getting with somebody who can truly understand this. Actually, my last therapist was this, um, I wouldn't say frighteningly thin, but she was incredibly thin and I could tell that she had a little bit of judgment around overweight people. Uh, I would you know, I, I don't want to put out fat phobic because it's become such a trendy thing to say. I want my words to have weight. I think though that she has her issues with food and, and we kind of are at the opposite ends of the spectrum. And, um, to me, it just made me feel more shame and I didn't feel like I could trust her. Uh, and I'll tell you in one of the sessions, she was asking how the eating and the working out was going. And I told her and I said something like, um, what's, what's your out of thighs? Is that the I, is that IT bands or something? Is that what that is? I said, those have been extremely tight. And I was about to say, and I'm doing yoga. She cuts me off and starts to get on the floor and demonstrate how to do pigeon pose. Now, if you guys don't know, there was many years that I did yoga I was very into that for a very long time. I got bored with it. It's the same stuff over and over. So I got very bored with it. Got away from that. But, um, and there's some other things behind this too. I'm realizing moving to Colorado Springs was probably the worst thing I could have done. Uh, <laughs> and it caused a lot of trauma. I, I'm working through that now. I'm working through that now. Now that I'm away from it, it's all kind of colliding. But um, working on it and I'm fine. I'm, I'm literally okay. I'm just, you know, day by day kind of dealing with all that stuff, but she gets on the floor in my therapy session and starts showing me yoga poses. And if you're sitting here listening to that going, what's wrong with that? Uh, wow. Okay. This isn't about, I didn't go to yoga class. 
Plus, I don't need her... I don't know. It was like she was more focused on making sure that I exercise appropriately than doing the psychological stuff. And that was very clear to me that she doesn't understand eating issues. She certainly doesn't understand people who are overweight and have struggled with being overweight. There are things that are very... I don't know. I don't want to say her and say triggering, but they're just, it, like I said, that wasn't the gig. Now, if she had asked me, well, I, you know, I have that problem. Do you want me to show you? And if I said yes, which I wouldn't have, because it was so awkward. She started doing yoga, like in front of me, like that's so weird. It's so weird to me, but I would have said no. But if, if I had said yes, and she wanted to show me, okay, that's different. You know, I've, I've asked for it, but this was like, no, this is how you do it. Make sure you do this so that you're not giving up on your weight journey or whatever. Uh, anyway, um, so we weren't really addressing the root of the problem. Um, I think she was getting triggered by a fat person sitting across from her. <laughs> I really do believe that this, just so you know, the context here, um, this therapist, I found her um, during the pandemic and therapists were at a premium, you know, and cause not everybody was available. And I only had two choices under my insurance. And there was this, um, facility that was helping me find the right therapist. And I remember saying to this woman, I said, now I do want to talk to someone about narcissistic abuse. And I've had a real problem at that point. I'd had a couple of therapists uh, um, guys, please hear me when I say it. Cause I know it's so easy to go. What's the common denominator? Don't be simple minded. Wake up. Okay. Do you know how many cluster B personality disorder people make it through the whole system to be, I mean, there's a lot you got to go through. I understand to be a therapist, they make it through. And then they're in charge of people's mental wellness. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? One almost pushed me over the edge. That was, her name was Anna. She was working with New School University out in New York. <sighs> Story to eleven on that one. And then there was another therapist I had online. She was in Golden, Colorado. Wouldn't show up for the sessions. Was cocky. Like she would show, she literally showed up 25 minutes late to a session. And then uh, only gave me the the remaining time. She didn't make up for the time that she was late. She just gave me the remaining time charged me full price. And then at the end, when she was trying to schedule for the next session, she chose a day and a time and I said, Oh, I, I can't make that time, but I can on any of the other days. And she threw her, I don't have a book here, but she threw her calendar, I guess, down on the, on the table and was like, well, then I guess you don't get a session next week. And I was like, okay, I, <laughs> the fact that I even tried therapy one more time, I believe in therapy. I believe in therapy very much when you get a good therapist. Okay. So then follow up with this one that I had out in Colorado Springs, uh, when I was going through this facility, I was saying about, you know, I want to work on narcissistic abuse and eating disorders. What was the impression you got from this therapist? And she said, um, well, just know I just had a quick conversation with her, but let's just say she seems very uh, charismatic. And I knew that was code for she could be a problem. But, uh, and she was. She gaslit me constantly. I remember we got into this whole thing. Um, I, I said I went for a hike. Now, on Colorado Springs, uh, people are unhinged. And if you're from Colorado Springs, I don't know what to tell you. Okay, people are freaking unhinged. And if you go out hiking, the mountain bikers take over the trails. Not all of them. Some of them are really sweet and very courteous. I about cried one time because this dude actually pulled his bike over so I could get, the path was like this narrow. And um, he pulled over for me. And he looked like he was like outfitted. So he was like a serious rider. You know what I mean? And I, and he had to stop. He had to stop what he was doing. And I'm not kidding. Like my eyes started tearing up. I'm like, thank you. Like basically, thank you for not running me off the mountain. That means so much. He was cute too. He was cute. If, if I hadn't been so thrown off, I, I should have flirted with them for a little bit, I guess. I don't know. So I want to make that clear. It's not everybody, but there's a lot of people, um, mountain bikers who just fly down those trails, don't care about anybody's safety, um, act like they own it and what have you. 
So this therapist, I was telling her, I was like, oh yeah, I almost got run over by a mountain biker a few hours ago. I said, that gave me a scare. I said, but otherwise, you know, she goes, that never happens to me. No, 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 no. Mountain bikers are very courteous. And I was like, they're not to me. No, 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 no. I always experience nice mountain bikers. They're nice. Like you don't even have to need to know much about anything cluster B related. Um, and you know that that's pretty messed up. That's the therapist I had. Yeah. Fun. Right. Yeah. Uh, I remember I also went into a session one time and her dog, this was, so if you don't know about, this is like the longest video ever, but like, um, Colorado Springs is very dog centric. I love dogs. I don't always love dog owners. Okay. They weaponize their pets. My dog can do whatever, <laughs> like acting like their dog has more rights than humans, whatever. Um, so one of the first sessions uh, that I had, or the first session I had with this person, I walked in, there's a dog there. Now, I love dogs, but what if I didn't? What if I was scared of dogs? What? This is therapy. I can have problems, okay? <laughs> like, how do you know I didn't suffer, God forbid, a dog bite at one time and I'm skittish around dogs? Didn't ask me if that was cool. Didn't didn't say anything. Do you prefer to have a therapy dog here? None of that. Okay. And what's more, she never bathed this dog. This dog was very smelly, like bad smelly. And um, he was sweet and smart. Oh my gosh. Very happy for his presence there. But literally, I would have to go home and change because the dog smelled so bad. Just saying. Anyway, I walked in one day and he had a tick on him. And she says to me, oh, I, and she's using my therapy time to try to get this tick off her dog. And I'm like, okay, yeah, we, we I guess we want to address this. She hands me a tissue and says, here, can you get it? Oh my God, I did not sign up for this. Okay, I did not sign up. I ended up getting the tick off the dog. She took it outside and she's very like, like stomping on this thing and like going, we're going to kill this thing, aren't we? Yes, we're going to kill this thing. Oh my God. Can we get 20 minutes later, we got into my therapy session that yes, I still had to pay for. So that's the kind of support when we're talking about wellness. Um, that's the kind of support I know I've had. I mean, it wasn't all bad. If you go back and listen to some of my videos, there, there was some progress and, you know, things that we did in those sessions that was incredibly helpful. And while I was in it, I was trying to just focus on the good stuff because at least I was getting something out of it. But yeah, so when we're talking about especially any kind of wellness, you know, make sure you're very careful about who you're going to. Don't be afraid to switch therapists. You have every right to be with a good therapist. And especially when we're talking about eating issues um, or just levels of stress or feeling like, you know, you don't want to work out. Or maybe you're working out too much. Remember, you know, this is another thing that our society does. It's actually not right. There are people who are obsessed with working out. I would say this therapist was one of them. She was absolutely obsessed with working out. And what's your deal? You're not doing it to a healthy level. You're overdoing it. Same kind of thing with people who have this like strict clean eating. I mean, if there's certain things that your body responds to and you, you've got that figured out and you know that this is what your body wants that's beautiful run with it but is is it because of your health or is it because of something else do you see what i'm saying so give these some these things some thought this week and see you know where you sit with all this let me know your thoughts as always i'm sending you guys so much love and take care